Hey, what's up guys? I'm back with part two of the Seton setup and currently I'm just going to show you uh, why current setup and how I'm doing it. Uh, part one, I kind of showed you the beginnings of setting it up, everything from getting the cable card uh, tuner set up to the Windows Media, um, getting the commercial uh, MCE Buddy uh, going as you see in the background there. Um, I just want to touch back and uh, see how my progress has been working with the new uh, Infinity TV6 Etho. Um, so far, I love it. Um, you know, I can't explain how much uh, you know time and money I'm saving. Well, I'm spending a lot of time troubleshooting some issues, but today I think I've you know fixed those issues that you might have um, and what I've experienced in the past. I'll give you a quick example. Everything was running good. I noticed a bunch of tearing and pixelation uh, in my recordings. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, that's not good because I'm sitting here recording, you know, a football game or something, and it's all garbled and it's like a bunch of high pitched noise in the background. You know, you really don't want that. So I did a little, you know, googling and troubleshooting, and uh, it came down to two issues: a my uh, my Infinity or Seton, you know, tuner is bad. B, um, my cable card, the actual cable card that the company, the Fios, gave me is bad. Or my signal is weak, which means that uh, the cable company is not boosting enough signal for me to process the, the, the actual reception of the, of the cable. So I went on chat with Fios, and Fios actually um, suggested getting a new cable card. And I was like, mm, I really think it was the signal, because my signal was like minus... 20 sometimes and i've read that your 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 decimal or your i forget the exact terminology but your 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 signal was actually supposed to be be between within like minus 7 to 15 or 30 plus so i'm still learning how those you know um signals work but right now i'm averaging about negative 11 as the worst but what i did is i actually ended up getting a new cable card from fios so I got the new cable card, put it in, my issue's fixed. So if you have that experience of pixelation or sudden jitterness, um, and you think it's because you're running wireless or even if you're running on a uh, you know, regular LAN cable, it's not. It's something to do with probably the cable card or the signal. Go ahead and get a new cable card. They're free or you're paying a monthly fee for it. Might as well get a new one. So um, that's the fix for that. Now on to my setup. Uh, as I said, I, I'm currently running a i3-4130 uh, Haswell socket, and I only got 4 gigs of RAM, as you can see there. Uh, that's plenty for what I'm doing. I might add another stick later. I'm running the Asus uh, Griffin Z87 socket 1150, like I said, and uh, it seems to be running pretty strong. For my graphics card, I did have a MSI uh, 270 R9 in there, but I went ahead and switched cases, and, and I'm, I'm going to show you my case here. Give me one second here. And um, I did it for a few reasons. Okay, so here we go. This right now is my case. It's a uh, fractal node. Oh, butcher this. I'll have to put it in the description, but it's an HTPC setup. It's the one that's for the home theater kind of kind of gig. And uh, as you can see here, I have uh, a Cooler Master, kind of like cheap $12 cooler. It's working so far. This is the new video card. Well, that's my other 270R9. It's the uh, WinForce uh, Gigabit uh, one. I was using it for mining, but now I'm, because Litecoins are dead, I'm now using it for this. Um, it's got a pretty good fan system on it. See if I can rotate this for you. Sorry for doing this. Not the cable expert. So you can see here that there's the uh, setup in the internals. You'll notice I have, um, this is the case here. Fractal, I don't know, it's eight something. But um, this thing's pretty cool. Uh, for power, power supply, I have a, an older, um, I believe it's an ABS, yep, 80 watt gold. And I believe that's up to a thousand watts. It's overkill for this system, but I didn't have anywhere else to put it, so I just figured I'd put it in here. I do have two fans um, not spinning. I have the fan right here turned off, 
and I have the uh, static fan over here. It looks like a static fan, sort of. Uh, that's off. Um, I just, I guess I forgot to plug in the fans. I don't know. I have to go back in there and clean it up. What I'm running is an SSD under here. Is the hard drives? Uh, it's one, uh, one 240 crucial SSD and a one terabyte Western Digital uh, hard drive, uh, 3.5. Now here is for my Wi-Fi. Um, what I did is I went ahead and uh, got the the, the, the recent uh, ASUS uh, AC68, I believe it is. Yep, Wi-Fi uh, wireless adapter. And that thing gets up to over a gig on the wireless network for AC, which is like about 1.3 on uh, 5 gigahertz and 80 hertz uh, frequency. These User are really good channel. when they use when they when they're working, but lately I've been having some driver issues and trying to talk to ASUS about those. So hopefully those will get fixed. Um, other than that, that's the case. Now the only problem is I did this yesterday and I put everything in this case, slided it into my home theater area because I was trying to find something that the wife won't kill me that doesn't look so you know ugly aesthetically, and um, I kept on getting blue screens so. <laughs> I'm going to make sure I turn these fans on and try again. Hopefully I won't get blue screens because of the, uh, the way it's, it's just dying from the, the heat, I think. I think that's what's going on. And the one problem I have with this case is that you notice this graphics card and my, all my other graphics cards, the power the, the PCI Express uh, power uh, plug-in is on the top. Well, there's this huge bar right here, right? And it, it, it's required for the hard drive uh, you know, cradle to rest on so you can put the top on nice and smooth but it's literally like pushing pressure on this on this graphics card which is not good so i'm not sure if i'm going to keep that in there i might have to get something that has a, a sideways power supply so i'm not too happy about that fractal i love your cases but i think that wasn't maybe something someone missed um maybe it's only really used for smaller graphics cards but it can easily fit this graphics card. This is one of the biggest graphics cards I have, I've ever had. Um, but I was disappointed that I couldn't plug it in and put the case top on because the uh, power plug would, <laughs> was obstructing it. Um, if I end up taking this fan or this other fan out, I might try liquid cooling uh, H, you know, uh, was it HADI. Might try that as another solution, but I don't know. So that's the case. So hope, hopefully that will work. Sorry for the jitterness. So let me get back to here. So on to my um, actual system internals here. So as you can see here in the background, I'm currently burning something. Married at first sight. That's got to be for the wife. Got to be. <laughs> um, so right now I'm running this program on uh, two threads. So let's check out, take a look here. So it should be on these two threads here which it looks like it's using. I left these two threads to uh, do you know, other recordings or any other type of tasks because I don't need this anytime soon. It could take 17 minutes, take an hour for all I care. I really don't care. Um, and I think either this was blue screening me because it was overloading the CPU because of the heat. I don't know, but right now I'm, I'm, lo I'm full load on two threads. I'm at 40 degrees Celsius. I should be okay moving forward. So just an overview again, what I'm doing is um, I have the Seton Etho card, which is here. Okay, I have this. Again, I have this plugged into my you know, coax cable. Uh, and one of the things you might want to check is the settings on the web. You have the Seton card, right? And go to device web page. Now here's what I was looking at from my, uh, my signal. Now, right now, I'm not recording anything, but what you would do is you'd basically go click on the tuner that you're, you're watching TV. Now, here, this is the signal I was looking at, this minus 14 dBmV. Um, this is the signal. Google this signal uh, and see what the average for your provider would be. I was told that minus 14 is actually pretty low, and to have either an amp put in or... Um, check your splitters and your and your connections because it shouldn't be that low. Now I'm running in a an apartment complex and I think the BIOS company probably isn't amping in enough you know throughout the apartment complex. So 
if I still have issues, I'm going to have Fios come out and uh, hopefully put an amp or a better splitter. Because right now I'm only splitting it right out of my, my outlet. And that should be fine. And the splitter I'm using is definitely a two-way minus four signal, whatever you splitter. It's like the best one I could get, you know. I'm hoping, let me, I thought it was. At least the guy at Micro Center told me, but that's another story. So here you can basically go through your settings. Um, and this acts just like another, you know, thing in your network. You can check your cable card. You can check your system, your VRAM on the card, on the tuner itself. Um, you can download logs. I haven't really played too much with this yet, but I, I do want to to make sure I'm getting the full use out of it. Um, so again, to go over the way this works is you've got your tuner plugged in, right? Everything's set up. How do you, User how do you entered your back channel. up all your stuff? How do you get it on Plex? Well, as I said, Plex is what I'm using for my my actual end my end user front end um, client. So on my TV, I'll I'll just t turn to my Plex app or a Plex app on another device like a Roku. And that will basically bring up all my TV from my NAS. I have a storage array. You could use a free NAS. You could use a Synology, what I have. Um, basically, you want a uh, repository for all your media. Now, you could basically put your Plex server on this machine, too. And I've thought about that more based on the I.O. and the, uh, the power that this chip has versus my NAS. So my NAS is just some little dual core. And whenever I'm streaming 1080p, I'm noticing that I get a full load out of my uh, Synology NAS. And I think I could get a better performance watching my, my TV and movies if I have my Plex server on the device that I'm, you know, right here, it's right next to it. So uh, I might move that and I might recommend that too if you have a similar setup. But again, even if I didn't, I have a task through RoboTask. This is free software you can download. Um, RoboTask Lite, Google it, download it. Uh, basically, what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying whatever movies I record, which would go to my two terabyte thing here. So recorded TV would go here. So here's Married at First, right? So right now what's happening is I'm recording. I recorded the show. So my MCE buddy said, OK, let me go grab that file, compress it, convert it and go ahead and place that file into another folder called compressed. So when this is done, it's going to put a, uh, a file here. And what I have on Robotask is a trigger. So I just named this uh, Move Video NAS. My actions, I put Move Copy, OK? Double click this. I said, OK, Move Copy, files you want to use. And I just put a wildcard. So it says any kind of files that drop in that folder, pick it up. And then I say Destination Folder as my home Synology folder, which is where my Plex is looking at. If you were running your Plex on your local machine here, you would just point it to whatever extra folder you have where you, where you figured out where you want for your, all your movies and stuff. Okay. Now also with that, there's triggers. So my trigger, I just said a file monitor. And I'm looking at that same folder that I'm picking the files up. Okay. And that's really it. That's, I mean, that's all you need to do to do the trigger a file, you know, to move by itself, and that will do it for you, which is really cool. And the way it works is this will create a folder, so everything is structured by folder, and that's what Plex needs. Plex needs a, a folder and then a file to really to have a good structure set up. So I'm copying not just the file, but also the folder with it. Now, the only problem I have here is I have in my Plex, I have a TV channel and I have a movie channel. Well, Right now, I have to manually decide, manually move the movies that record that aren't TV. So, I think in the future, I might have to maybe put an advanced uh, filter to say, "Hey, this is a movie. Put it in the movies uh, folder on the NAS instead of TV." But that's very small, small issue for me. I'm not worried about that. So that's really it. Um, you know, keep in touch. Uh, I'll try and do some more videos on some more troubleshooting things that I run into. I'll try to do a separate segment on the MCE Buddy settings. Uh, I can't show you now because this it would stop this current process. I don't want to do that. But, uh, you know, subscribe, like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.